Hey everyone, I'm Kenan Prava here with another Blender VFX tutorial. We're going to be making some firepower in Blender. This is my beautiful wife here who uh, was kind enough to help us out. So this is the example footage I'm going to be using. I'm going to waste no time and jump right into the motion tracking tab and load in my footage. You can see she just holds her hands out here. So that leads us to step one, track those hands. Now, uh, we weren't really smart and we didn't put any tracking markers on her hand, but thankfully she was wearing some jewelry. So if I press control and click, I can sort of track some of that jewelry there and it gets off a little bit. So if I just press G and move that tracker into position, I can kind of do some manual tracking. And this really doesn't have to be clean because I really just want a general placement of each hand so that by the end of this, it should have two tracks that relatively follow her hands. And that's going to help us out a lot. I'm going to come over here to solve and under geometry, I'm going to link empty to track. And I'll do that for both of these. This constrains the camera to an empty and we can kind of adjust our camera a little bit so that those empties are at a size we like. And you can see they follow their track to her hands. Cool. So now let's load in our background footage. It should just be under our camera clip settings. And there you go. Two tracks that follow her hands. Nice. Step two, add your fire elements. Now this is not a Blender Fire Sim tutorial. You probably know Blender has a pretty cool fire simulator and it can do a lot of cool things, but it also takes forever to bake and to render. So if you want to use your own fire element that you make in Blender, by all means do that. I'm gonna be using some stock footage. So I'm gonna simply import images as planes and I'm gonna load in this clip from actionvfx.com. I'm gonna set my emit strength and make sure you click alpha as well. I can even set the scale of it right inside that add-on. So now I have this really cool fire element from Action VFX, and I can just position it so that it matches up with her hand. And then I'm gonna parent using control P to that empty. Boom, fire. You might think this is cheating, but come on, guys, it's it, it still looks cool. And is it cheating when it looks cool? Uh, no, I don't think so. Anyway, I'm just going to turn on automatic keyframe and adjust the scale and rotation of this to kind of get sort of a, a growing animation effect. This is all certainly to taste and how you want to do it. I just sort of had that flame growing out of her hand for the first few frames that I wanted it to pop on. With automatic keyframing on, I'm just going to continue to make some small adjustments. Remember, our track wasn't very perfect, so we're going to kind of fine tune it so that it stays tracked perfectly to her hand and scale it in places where that hand gets closer to the camera. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other hand. And in the shader of this fire material, I can actually offset those frames and use the exact same element and get a different result. Step three, rendering and compositing. Under film settings, going to make sure I check transparent. I can actually render this in cycles with just one sample because I'm using a video clip. So we don't need samples. Cool. Another reason why I like using stock footage. Let's jump into the compositor. I've got mine set up so that my viewer node is up here in the top right hand corner. Yours might look a little bit different, but hey, we're artists here. Make your compositor how you want it. I'm going to drop in a movie clip node. And if I control shift and click on that, I can view my footage. Nice. So I'm going to drop in a few scale nodes just to do some housekeeping. And then I'm going to press shift A and drop in a mix node. And set that movie clip to the top of that mix node. And set this bad boy to screen. Nice. I'm going to drop in a blur node and blur the heck out of it. Ah, where'd our fire go? Well, that's not what we want. So I'm going to duplicate that screen node by pressing shift and D. I'll take my original render into the first screen node and then the blur output into that second one. Boom. So here we have our render with the fire composited. Ha ha, we have glow. Fire glows, but it doesn't glow that much. So let's dial it back. Yeah, let's add some hue and saturation. Adjust that so that that fire looks a little bit more like it belongs in the scene. Okay, we're done. Yeah, not really. That fire has a sharp edge there and it doesn't really integrate with her hands. So step four, 
Rotoscope the hands. Let's go back into the masking section. And I'm gonna create a new mask, name it hand, or left hand, right hand, if you wanna be specific. I can control and left click to start creating a mask. I can set the handle type. And I'm just clicking along here, masking out the part of her hands that I want the fire to be contained inside. Remember, I don't really have to be very careful here. I just want to make sure that the fire doesn't bleed out the edge of her fingers so that it looks like it's staying contained to the inside of her hand. This obviously is completely to taste for your footage. And if someone is holding a really flat palm, then you'll have to do even less masking than what I'm doing here. I can press Alt-C to close that mask, or Option-C, and then the rotoscoping comes by animating that mask. So I have automatic keyframes on, and I'm just jumping every 10 frames or so and adjusting the mask to fit her hand, and then I'll go back and fine-tune that as needed. Podcasting music time, music time. Podcasting music time. All right, I'm gonna take that mask output and drop it into that very first screen node of our fire composite element. And then you can see, aha, the fire is contained inside the mask. We might need to invert it. There we go. Now, if you created two separate masks for each hand like I did, just duplicate that mask node and add those bad boys together. A math node works pretty well. Set that to add, and now control shift click, we have a really ugly looking mat there. We can plug it into the factor of our screen node, and voila! But it still has a sharp edge, so let's blur it. I blur everything, just half of compositing is just blurring stuff. Alright, so there's my blurred mat. Let's view that. Aha! Integration galore, just like that. Okay, now we're done. Eh, not really. Let's join those all nodes together, do some housekeeping, make it look nice. Your node tree has to look nice, guys. It's, it's, it's a rule. So I'm going to add in a mix node. Step five, add the bounce light. A lot of different ways you can do this. I'm going to use an RGB node. Pick a color. Set it to soft light or screen. Nice. But we really only want it to affect her face and body. So we need to create another mask so that stays contained to just her body. So back in the mask section, I'm gonna mask around her torso here. Alt C to close that mask. More rotoscoping. You can see I'm not being too careful here. Every 10 or 15 frames or so till I have a rotoscope around her torso. And then I'm just plugging that mask in as the factor of that soft light. And boom, bounce light. Let's blur that. Let's blur everything. So there's our mat, blurred. Now it sort of looks like light. Nice. So many other things you can do here. Drop in some color, balance, sure. Maybe a glare node. Streaks, aha. A lot of fun things you can do here, guys. Make the eyes glow, make the fire bloom, make it your own. There's some 10 minute firepower for you, quick and easy using some stock footage from Action VFX. I'll link them in the description. They have some free fire, but you can certainly purchase or make your own in Blender. I wanna see what you do with your newly discovered firepowers in Blender. If you do this effect, drop a link in the description and I'll check out your result. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.